Let's uh, start off here. Music really is built around three ingredients, rhythm, melody, and harmony. Um, and all three of those are something that we can easily work with on this instrument. Now rhythm, of course, that's just kind of the ebb and the flow. Anytime you're listening to a song and there's, um, you're tapping your foot or bobbing your head or dancing or um, clapping along, whatever the case may be, um, you're feeling the overall rhythm. And we can split that rhythm into smaller and smaller chunks. We certainly don't bob our head to every single note that we're hearing in the song, um, but instead to the overall beat. So in this case here, my left hand is really holding down the beat. And that's, that's really rhythm. There's, there's not too much more for us, um, for our purposes today, to be talking about with that. That's just sort of the glue that really holds our musical performance together. Um, and then from there, we, we have melody. Now, it's important to think about this too. I, I think it's helpful to realize that in human history, rhythm is the first thing that humans come up with. Melody comes a little bit later. Harmony comes quite a bit, uh, quite a ways after that. Um, so we're going to be kind of looking at them in that order as well. Now, once we want to start working with melody, well, we need to be working with specific notes. Um, that's, of course, what we've got in front of us here. Um, and this leads to the development in different areas of the world of different tuning systems or different collections of notes. Um, and if we just, whatever the tuning system is, we're on a tuning system here known as the equal temperament tuning system, but whatever tuning system you're, you're working in, anywhere around the world, anywhere in human history, if you use all the notes at random, it's not exactly the most musical sounding thing in the world. It's not really what most of us are thinking of when we're thinking about music. Now, that is a style of music. It's known as playing in an atonal style. Um, and oh, looks like we got a couple people jumping in here. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, um, where we're at right now, we, we're just introducing how melody works. And in order to talk about melody, um, we need to be talking about notes. So um, thanks for joining. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Um, but back to the topic at hand. Once we want to work with melodies, we want to work with notes different areas around the world throughout human history have come up with different collections of notes that we know as tuning systems, but even within those tuning systems we need to be careful because if we use all of, other, all of the notes at random, it doesn't sound very musical. We call that style of music atonal. Um, it creates sort of tension and it's very dissonant to the ear and what's happening is the ear really has no sense of the note functions. It doesn't really have a sense of which note is home. There's no tonal center of gravity. It's atonal. There's, there's nothing that we can point to as sort of a home position. Um, and so what we want to do then is we want to use certain subsets of notes. And once we're working with particular subsets of notes, certainly starts to sound a little bit more musical. Even if I'm playing notes kind of at random without really much intention behind them, I know that the notes are going to go together. Now, um, that subset that I was doing just then was a subset of the 12 notes we have in this tuning system, um, specifically seven of them. Um, and so once I started working with those seven notes, there was a sense of a tonal center of gravity. Each note had a function and it sounded musical. Um, atonality can be interesting and certainly some composers have um, dabbled with it as a means of creating music, but generally that's not what we're going to be going for. And one of your goals on this instrument in particular, or really on any instrument, is going to be to get comfortable playing within a subset of those notes. Now, 